Is the MCU losing its magic? The Marvels was the worst box office opening ever for Marvel Comics. The movie only grossed $47 million on its opening week. It's also been said that it's had the worst second week ever with a 79% drop in box office sales from week one to week two. I recently watched the movie, The Marvels, and here's my opinions on this. The opening scenes had Dar Ben looking for the quantum bands on this random planet. The part that's really confusing about this is we don't know why she was looking for the quantum bands and we have no clue as to where she is looking for these bands. So the way this started is just kind of out there. If you were watching this movie and you've never watched Miss Marvel, you probably have no clue what the quantum bands are. But the quantum band is a actual bracelet slash wristband that Miss Marvel, also known as Kamala Khan, received from her grandmother as a family heirloom. And over time, she discovered that this family heirloom actually had powers. And these are electromagnetic powers. So Darbin discovered one of the bands. She didn't realize that the second one was not in the same location. So that second one is actually with Miss Marvel. We're going to take a deeper dive into this movie to see whether it's a good movie, bad movie, or just okay movie. Miss Marvel is a 16 year old high school student in New Jersey and she received this quantum band from her grandmother as a family heirloom and found out that she now had powers when she used this band. So if you watch the Miss Marvel show, you would notice that she learns different techniques that she can do with the electromagnetic powers of this quantum band. Miss Marvel appears in her bedroom daydreaming about fighting side by side with Captain Marvel and then all of a sudden her quantum band starts to glow and once it glows she just disappears. Once she disappears they introduce Monica Rambeau into the movie. She is finding out about this disturbance as well and she's in space trying to learn more about a jump point which is what is opening up in the sky and causing these disturbances within the electromagnetic field. So when she arrives at the jump point, her and Captain Marvel are both trying to figure out what's going on with these jump points. They touch the jump point, and once she touches it, it causes them to switch places. So all three of the ladies end up trading places based on the fact that they all have powers of electromagnetic type. So when this happens, they're all confused as to where they're going, how they're going, but each one is switching places in the different areas where the previous one was at. Monica Rambeau gained her powers from WandaVision when she walks through the hex, which was placed by the Scarlet Witch herself. And when she walks through this hex, she goes through a couple times back and forth, and then all of a sudden she starts to feel the electromagnetic power. So this is where her powers came from, which allowed her to have the electromagnetic powers similar to the other ladies. Now that the women have switched places once, they're starting to figure out what's going on with the story and how the jump points are happening. Nick Fury is in the space station and now he sees Kamala Khan, which is Miss Marvel, because Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel switch places. So he's trying to figure out the story, trying to figure out the pieces. They're all doing this back and forth. So every time that they use their powers, they end up switching places again. Captain Marvel, also known as Carol Danvers, finds out that Darden is behind these jump points. And from there, she thinks that the Kree are going after the scrolls. So she takes it upon herself to go and go meet up with the scrolls to warn them of what's going on with the Kree, not knowing that they were trying to set up a peace treaty. And Nick Fury, also tried to warn her not to get involved with their, their business. When Captain Marvel arrives at the planet of Tarnak, the planet where the Skrulls live, and she tries to warn them of what's going on, Darvin ends up arriving at the planet and she thinks that the scrolls are betraying her. So now she causes another jump point in the sky using the bangle and the <laughs> The issue with Darbin being the villain in this movie is that we don't have any backstory on her. We don't understand where she came from, why she's here, what's causing her to have issues with Captain Marvel. The only thing we know is that she has this issue and now she's trying to take over, bring her planet back, which is called Hala, because Hala's losing this oxygen. So come to find out, she's upset with Captain Marvel, who they also call the Annihilator, because she killed off the Supreme Intelligence. The Supreme Intelligence was the overseer of Hala and keeping the balance and order of them, and she thought she was doing the people justice by freeing them from the Supreme Intelligence. But instead, she caused their planet to go awry, not see the sun anymore, deal with the loss of oxygen and all of these other things. So Darbin blames her for this situation.
and now this is the reason why she has this animosity. As far as any other backstory, we don't know if Darbin had parents that were killed off, if there was any other type of struggles that she dealt with throughout her life, anything. She just happened to be this new character that gets thrown upon us and doesn't really have much substance. Once all three superheroes figure out how to channel their electromagnetic powers to where they don't jump around so much, they end up going to Darbin's worship. So in this battle with Darbin, all three of the superheroes start fighting with Darbin and attacking her back and forth different ways, trying to figure out ways to stop her. One of the hits actually lands on the quantum band that she has on her arm and it charges up her band. So it makes her stronger. Now the issue I have with this is how come once they realize this band is being charged up with power based on their electromagnetic powers being hit on the band, why wouldn't they think to do the same thing with Miss Marvel? That part is just too logical. So throughout this time, they don't even think to do the same with Kamala Khan's band, Miss Marvel, as they did with Darbin. So Darbin ends up taking advantage of that. Another part where this movie gets weird is back on the ship with Nick Fury, Goose, the alien cat is there. He starts spawning eggs around the ship. So these eggs end up hatching into kittens. And from here, they're evacuating to go back to Earth because they're being attacked by the Kree on the space station. So now the plan that they come up with to get back to Earth because they don't have enough pods to carry all the people is to have the alien cats swallow the people so that that way they're in a smaller form to be able to put them inside of the little space pod that are heading back to planet Earth to be able to store the people at a bigger capacity because they're now inside of these cats. Now, the parts that's just really wonky about this is why would cats be able to swallow people and then regurgitate them and nothing happens to these people. So these people are just stored inside of these kittens and cats bodies and then transported back to Earth. Very strange concept as to why they did this. Uh, not sure what was the thinking or the logic behind this, but it's very out of place. In addition to this craziness, they also went to a planet called Aladna. And when they arrived at Aladna, the people only spoke by singing. So they had to do this song and dance and do this whole ceremony when they arrived and all of this craziness. So this just really kind of made the story drag because you had to sit here and listen to the people sing to be able to understand what they were talking about. And then to top it off, Captain Marvel was actually the princess of this planet. So their prince and Captain Marvel ended up getting married and she said it's all a formality. So not sure what kind of peace treaty or what it was that she negotiated with this planet as to why she had to become the princess. But this whole part of the scenes was just out of place too. But then once they did the whole song and dance ceremony and all of that good stuff, the prince finally comes out and now they don't have to sing anymore. The prince can talk regular to, you know, Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel and Monica Rambeau. Not sure why this part needed to be added into the movie as well because it just really was nothing substantial. There was nothing that really gave it any grounds as to why this was the case and why it needed to be in the movie. So the purpose of them coming to the planet Aladna was to get assistance with fighting the Kree. When Darbin and the Kree end up arriving at Aladna, they end up ensuing in battle. So the Aladnian people and the Marvels are going to war with the Kree and Darbin on the planet. In this fight that's going on, Miss Marvel was given a scarf as a weapon. So now she's slinging this scarf around and hitting the Kree people with it. And the scarf just looks like a regular old scarf. So I'm not sure why they chose this as a weapon to give her. And then also the Latinian people just had these bright colored suits on that just kind of look like beetles and stuff like that. So the whole fight scene was just weird as well. Didn't see how this all tied in. It felt like it was a snippet that got thrown into the movie to make time. But other than that, I didn't see why this process was the way it was. And now this fight was in soon. After the fight scene at Aladna, the Marvels end up meeting up with Darbin to fight in the final fight of the movie. While this happens, they're all attacking her, going back and forth, and they finally remove her staff from her hands. They end up tossing the staff into her, which causes her to get impaled by the staff. Now that she's been impaled by the staff, they go to try and help 
help her because they see that she's starting to die. They remove the staff from her. Once they do that, she ends up taking the bangle from Miss Marvel, and then now she has Miss Marvel under her staff. So from here, they try to attack her again. Captain Marvel ends up rushing her. The two of them end up flying out into space. And while they're out in space, Darben tries to conjure the power of both bangles. And when she does this, it causes her to explode. So this fight scene really didn't have enough going on for me to stay engaged with it. It was a little bit of fighting here, there, all over the place. And all of a sudden, Darben just ends herself. So there really was no follow-up that could be done to this fight. There was no further details as to why. There was really no substance as far as what was going on in the mind of the character Darben, except for saving her planet. And I just feel like this part was poorly written. After the Marvels handle Darben, they're figuring out how to seal up the jump point. And they come up with an idea to where Monica Rambeau will get charged up with the power from Captain Marvel and the power from Miss Marvel, and she will use that. Through the jump point, which leads her into another dimension, and she seals it from the inside. So now she's stuck in another dimension because she sealed this jump point closed with herself inside. Not sure why she had to go inside of the jump point to seal it and not be able to seal it from the dimension that she was currently in, but now she's stuck inside of it. So the movie pretty much ends here. You have Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel meeting up at a truck that belonged to Monica Rambeau's mom. So they're in the truck and they're saying that they're going to hold on to the truck until Monica Rambeau comes back. Now, in the mid credits, it shows Monica Rambeau appear in a hospital room and her mother is alongside her. So now she's excited figuring out that her mom's still alive, but then the mom doesn't actually recognize her. So now Monica's starting to realize something's wrong and that she's in some place that is not the same as her normal reality. And as she's figuring this out and talking to the mom and the mom doesn't have any recollection of her, all of a sudden Beast from X-Men comes in. So this is where they tie in the fact that the X-Men are supposed to be coming into the Avengers. This part of the scenes was pretty good because Beast was running her vitals, checking things out, discussing things with Monica Rambeau, trying to figure out where she came from, how the things happened that happened. And he mentions that Professor X is looking at the information and wants to speak further. From there, that's when the scene cuts. You can see Monica's mom, Maria, has on a new suit that she's never seen her in before. After this, we pretty much don't know how things are going to tie together, whether the MCU is going to get rebooted, whether or not they're going to continue with this script now, because there was so much pushback on the fact that this movie was not well written, the CGI wasn't that great, and just the whole structure of it just didn't come together well. Marvel focused this movie on the women demographic and they kind of neglected the male demographic because they wanted to make sure that they showed that these female characters were strong, dominant superheroes. But also, even Nick Fury's role in this movie was very limited. He had just a couple scenes here and there while he was on that space station and didn't really provide any more clarity as to what was going on. And now we're kind of left at a cliffhanger to figure out what's going to happen in the future. So that's it for Splash Talk. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Let me know what you guys think. I look forward to you guys watching this video. Check out my other videos on the channel. I'll be providing more movie reviews, entertainment news, sports, current events, anything that you could think of that's current and now, I'll be talking about it.